uh, just a few uh, items over the last 14 days. The trends we're seeing, our cases are down 69% over the last 14 days, uh, but our deaths have increased 26% over the last 14 days. Uh, cases per week, we just received our number, our weekly report from the state this morning showed that we had 1,074 cases the week of February 6th. So you can see where we are. Uh, you can see the Omicron surge very prominently on this um, uh, graph, uh, and you can see we have now, you know, back to where we were at the beginning of the Omicron surge. The last slide uh, is just the at-home test kits uh, available that was started yesterday uh, through the health department and libraries. Uh, and this is pretty uh, um, pretty well updated. This just, um, Todd, I believe you posted this uh, about four or five hours ago, so there may be some branches that are out, uh, some more branches, but you can see we partner with the library system because they have 10 branches, uh, really trying to make the test kits uh, more available. Uh, you can see that they are out already at Clemens Library, Patterson Memorial Branch, Renolda, Manor Branch and the Southside Branch. Uh, we're trying to keep that updated in real time as much as we can. Uh, the libraries are putting it on their Facebook page, plus we're putting it on the Health Department and the Forsyth County Government page. And we still have test kits available here at the Health Department. But again, these are all while supplies last. You can also get N95 masks only at the Health Department. I think it's usually two to three weeks behind. So when cases surge and peak and it's usually two to three weeks uh, in this case it looks like it's you know our um it's probably i think it's following that same um same pattern and i think what you'll see is as the cases dip down in their low point then that's two to three weeks from now is when the deaths hit their lowest will people be less apt to less incentive to get vaccinated because cases are going down correct correct um that may be the case. I don't think it shouldn't be because, uh, you know, when you look at the number of individuals that are uh, with the vaccine fully vaccinated, I mean, you still have, even in 25 to 49 year olds, you have 38% that are not fully vaccinated. Uh, and, and so, you know, and, and then when you look at 18 to 24 year olds, you have 44% that are not fully vaccinated. So you still have large portions of the population that are not fully vaccinated. We are fortunate that when you look at our 75 plus, only 7% are not fully vaccinated. Only 12% of 65 to 74 year olds are not fully vaccinated. So thankfully that most vulnerable group is the highest vaccinated group. Uh, but you know, this is still uh, as, uh, you know, as we see in other states as masks are coming off or scheduled to come off, uh, you know, as that begins to happen, people that are unvaccinated are going to be le less protected. So that's, you know, a reason to do that right thing and get the vaccine. You've seen thousands of people in uh, Forsyth County. I think it's last count 220, 250,000 people that have gotten the vaccine. So there's a large portion of the population that's gotten the vaccine. vaccine. If they did get COVID, which that can happen, it's those breakthrough cases, it's very minor. But when you look at that versus persons that have not been vaccinated, who've had uh, severe cases of COVID, lost work time, been hospitalized, uh, I think it still makes sense to get the vaccine.